Good evening, everyone. Time for another member update. Now, this is silver. It's the long-term weekly chart. And you can see we're still in primary trend being down. And um, looking at this, you can see there's really not too much lower to go on it. I mean, yes, it could go lower from here, but, um, you know, we've been going down for so long. Uh, we're at an average price, 20 bucks. It's been there for years and years and years. So um, you can't get a better buying price than that. Now, the madness in the rest of the world continues. We've got madness going on in the currencies. Um, the one that I would point out here that is the most important, as we're going to see in the story from Simon Black, is the Chinese ren, renminbi. And um, although it has changed as far as the trend line that it's in, um, it's violated the downtrend line a little bit. Uh, but really, honestly, that's not a very big change in that currency. And uh, that, that's really the most important currency out there because that's where the, all the goods are manufactured. So that's going to be the currency you need to own to be able to buy those manufactured goods. And although all of the currencies of the world are weakening against the U.S. dollar, um, the renminbi really isn't weakening against the U.S. dollar. Um, and I think that's mainly because it can't be manipulated. Again, we'll see that story from Simon Black in a second. But I want to look at the Brazilian real. You can see here's the, the latest currency in the... Uh, currency wars that's being destroyed. You can see from um, about mid-2011, it, it's basically lost 50% of its value from about 1.5 to 3. And you can see this move here that we had in the last financial crisis. Um, yeah, we've got a more substantial move now. Uh, what does that portend? Is there a bigger financial crisis coming? I think there is. So, Let's get over to some stories here, and then I'm going to make some announcements about the member site and some changes that are going to be coming up. Um, first one I want to look at is we're going to look at a couple from Simon Black. This is the one about China. You can see that China actually put up a billboard. Here it is, RMB, New Choice, the world currency. Do you see that? This is Simon Black from Bangkok, Thailand. When I arrived in Bangkok the other day, coming down the motorway from the airport, I saw a huge billboard and it floored me. The billboard was from the Bank of China and it said, RMB, the new choice, the world currency. Given that the Bank of China is more than 70% owned by the government of the People's Republic of China, I find this very significant. It means that China is literally advertising its currency overseas and it's making sure that everyone landing at one of the world's busiest airports sees it. They know that the future belongs to them and they're flaunting it. And it's true. The renminbi's importance in global trade and as a reserve currency is increasing exponentially with the renminbi trading hubs popping up all over the world from Singapore to London to Luxembourg to Frankfurt to Toronto. Multinational companies such as McDonald's are now issuing bonds in renminbi and even sovereign governments are issuing debt denominated in renminbi including the UK. Almost every major global player out there, be it governments or multinationals, is positioning itself for the renminbi to become the dominant reserve currency. But that's but here's the thing. Nothing goes up and down in a straight line, and China is in deep trouble right now. Now, I don't, I don't happen to agree completely with that. but um, So that's the main story. Um, <laughs> incredible. Uh, they know it. You know it. We know it. I've been preaching this for years. It's amazing how long you can preach on something that, uh, you know, it's inevitable. Of course, I, I personally believe because the Bible prophecy says so. But uh, just from looking at the fundamentals and listening to people that I respect, like Jimmy Rogers, Simon Black, Zach, I've been saying for, you know, eight years that China is going to um, completely dominate the world. And as Jimmy Rogers says, for the next century, um, it's going to. That's just the reality. Anybody who looks at the facts can't deny it. But a lot of people have a lot of vested interests and they don't want to see what's coming. But it's becoming increasingly obvious. Now here's one that's kind of related. This is also Simon Black. 
This is Japan projects to spend 43% of their tax revenue just to pay interest on the debt. Now that is incredible. At one quadrillion yen, the debt level is so high that it now takes the government 43% of its central tax revenue just to pay interest this year. Now think about that. What is the interest rate there? Isn't the interest rate down around point something percent? How can you have so much debt that it takes the interest on that debt takes 43% of your tax revenue when the interest rates, I mean, if interest rates were normalized, would the debt take 250% of your tax revenue? It's crazy. The percentage of tax revenue to service the debt has been rising for years and is absurdly unsustainable. Yet large Japanese businesses have dutifully continued to hold Japanese government bonds as a part of their obligation to make sure that the government doesn't look bad. It's like a financial nimawashi saving their counterparty from embarrassment. That He explains that up above, that that's part of the Japanese culture, and it really is everyone's saving face over there. Uh, this, however, is starting to change through its policy of aggressively seeking to create inflation. The government is now guaranteeing that anyone who holds Japanese government bonds will lose money. This makes government bonds no longer an investment or a store of value, but a charity case. At best, it's just another tax. Throughout history, governments have overestimated how much their citizens are willing to accept. Japan has a beautiful stoic culture that has been able to endure tremendous suffering. That said, everyone has a breaking point, and that's when you see there's a big difference between love of your country and love of the government. Bottom line, it's already starting to unravel. Every time I'm in Singapore now, as I was just last week, my banking contacts report exponential growth in Japanese customers. Businesses, entrepreneurs, and investors are all moving money out of Japan and into Singapore. Even Japanese banks are aggressively expanding, following the money out of their own country. This is precisely when capital controls end up being imposed, when a trickle of capital fleeing turns into a flood. We're seeing the same thing right now in many places around the world, with most of the attention now focused on Greece and other parts of Southern Europe. However, as Japan has the third largest economy in the world and is the most woefully indebted, it's really the one to watch. When the powder keg goes off that sets the global financial system ablaze, it will most likely be in Japan where the match is lit. And that's absolutely true. They are the leaders. They have had the 30 years of a dead economy. So they, they were the first ones to go down this road of ZERP, and we can see it just doesn't work. So the last article is an article from Zero Hedge back on the third. And this is interesting because I haven't heard this index mentioned for quite some time lately. And now you can see the reason why. It, I mean, it would be something that you would expect the powers that be to show a lot of because you know it's something for them to boast about but we've heard for many many years about the misery index it first became famous in the 1970s when uh, we had a combination of high unemployment and high inflation of course that's when the misery index uh, set record highs as well so that's when it became uh, really something that people were paying attention to but what's interesting here is you can see the misery index is about ready to break into new record lows that haven't existed since 1957. That's where it's going to be, 1957. Um, and why is that? Well, we know we know what that is. The mis again, the misery index is a combination of high, how high unemployment is and how high inflation is. And uh, so then when we conclude looking at this, that inflation must be very low and unemployment must be very low as well. And they're lying. They're lying about both of them. Underemployed, overindebted, underpaid, forget about it. The clever economists that run the world have news for you. Based on economist Arthur Oaken's misery index, which combines inflation and unemployment rates, Americans are the least miserable since 1959. Or just, or perhaps just the government supplied data on inflation and unemployment is entirely fallacious. You decide. And there's your home ownership rate. You can see plummeting. 
There's the labor force participation rate. We harp on that constantly. Here's a new chart to me. This is percentage change um, for, all oh, those are put together. Okay, that's a percent change since 1978 for educational books, medical services, new home prices. So you can see in the blue, there's educational books. Of course, you know, that's not even fair to put that in there because we know that col the college thing, that's just a gigantic scam. And they're just uh, raping and pillaging uh, the youth of America, um, who they're partially to blame because they're buying into that. Uh, I, I can't believe they are. They should form their own co-ops form their own study groups, form their own businesses. They should completely dump this educational system, which is a, a gigantic, a shameful racket. But you can see here the medical services. Of course, that's another complete racket uh, of crooks, scoundrels, quacks, and criminals. But you can see that's up 575% uh, since 1970, since that time. Uh, consumer price index is up 250%, but the price of new homes is up 325%. Uh, I'm sure there's others that you could put on there. So uh, the main point here is that they're lying. They're lying about um, everything. I showed you before on the video who blowtorched the jobs market. Well, it was the Fed. And now they're just blatantly lying about it. So what's this going to look like? when uh, interest rates explode and uh, unemployment uh, absolutely explodes, what's that index going to look like? Um, it's crazy. So I wanted to get to the announcements. Um, I have just recently left my occupation I've been at for 15 years, and uh, I'm going to go ahead and uh, collect my monies and uh, get out of the retirement system, we'll say. Uh, probably have another boating accident here pretty soon. And so that's going to give me an opportunity to spend a lot more time on the member site to do things with the members. And uh, the first thing that I'm thinking about doing is um, having some type of roundtable, uh, whether that's, you know, a we do it live sort of thing like the guys... Um, uh, Red Pill Revolution and PK-22 and those guys that are the conspiracy guys. Uh, whether it's something like that or something different, I'm still mulling out in my head. But basically, it's going to be a live uh, video conference, um, audio conference, something like that. Probably we're all control the screen at first, and then maybe uh, we'll get to the point where we can share that. I'm not sure that works yet. I have to explore that. Um, and then maybe some live chat running in the side, but then have Skype where I can bring on the members, uh, can call in and have some sort of roundtable or discussion on the topics. There were a lot of topics today here on Zero Hedge. In fact, I couldn't remember where I had seen this, um, this stop whining thing. And so I was here on Zero Hedge and I was scrolling through. And it's really amazing because a lot of times I'll be scrolling through here. I'm like, where was that? I'm like my dad used to be with the newspaper. He'd, he'd say, uh, here's a story you need to read. And then for the next 15 minutes, you'd watch him flipping through it, trying to find the story because uh, he read every story in the paper. But, you know, you read through here on Zero Hedge and uh, there's just so many stories. I got nine pages back and I was still finding stuff I hadn't read yet. So... Um, that's another thing we'll be able to do is to go through these stories, have a quick discussion. Uh, it's not just what I think, but what you think, and uh, we can come to somewhat of the of a type of um, meeting of the minds on that sort of thing. Um, another thing is that uh, on the member site, we've had uh, a number of people ask about the member updates, and just so you can understand. Um, the way it currently is set up is that if you're on the member site, uh, when I post a new one, like I'll post this one tonight, um, it, it's going to be at the top, but there isn't really a way right now that you're notified that it's coming out. That is, uh, There is Twitter, and it is tweeted. The problem with that is that it's the same Twitter that I use for my blog, uh, for the public blog, Silver for the People brotherjohnf.com, and that gets that has about 100 to 150 postings per day, though every one of those is tweeted. So unless you have some kind of rule where you can see the tweet says member update, and uh, then you know a member update has been posted, then that's not really functional. So what I'm going to try to do 
is get the list of all the members and either send out an email notification or get some type of unique notification that will notify members that uh, there's a new video out. So those are some of the things we're looking at doing. I have some other ideas. I'm looking at the Twitch thing um, just as an idea, but uh, kind of uh, it, it, as I watch people on Twitch, I can see that they have a tremendous amount of interactive media. I think this is going to be really the future. I think that uh, the audience interacting live is that's really where it's going to go. That's that's the next step if you think about it, because those of us that follow the news and everything that's out right now um you know it's who tweeted it or who found the story or so and so just posted this well you know this is kind of like the next step this is live you know where um if these things are running live and you happen to be the guys that are live at the time um and someone says hey this just happened in such and such uh, there was a bombing over here or war broke out over here or so and so just devalued the currency and you know you're live on the air Obviously, that's going to be the place to be because people are actually going to be discussing it live. And uh, so I'm excited about that. I'm excited about having time off to um, concentrate on the member site and add more value. I'm going to try to be doing some kind of promotions to bring in more members. I do like the way that it is. Um, a lot of people have asked me, you know, why don't you do promotions and things like that? And I do want to have a, a larger number of members on the member site, but at the same time, uh, I kind of like having a small community. I certainly don't want to put the price so low that everybody and their dog is a member, and then people are spam blasted, and they don't really feel like they can, there's no discussion. You know, it's I think there's a comfortable size, maybe a little bit larger. So um, I'm going to try to draw more people in, try to have some round tables and hopefully there'll be more value added on the member site. So again, we're looking at silver. It's in that fantastic long downtrend that uh, never seems to end. But again, that's a good thing because we know we're at super low prices. Um, another good thing for the round table is gonna be, um, people can just talk live about uh, some coins they found. We can click through them. We can look at them. We can talk about them live. It's just going to be real interesting. I'm not really sure whether I'm going to do that, uh, allow the public in on that, or whether I'm going to broadcast it later. Those are some details I have to work out. I, I welcome everybody's input on that, and we'll talk to you next time.